I would like to acknowledge that I'm speaking to you today from the unceded lands of the Multnomah, Wasco, Cowlitz, Kathlamet, Clackamas, Tumwater, Bands of Chinook, Tualatin, Kalapoya, Malula, Watlala peoples, and other Indigenous communities of the Big River, the original custodians of the land of so-called Oregon. I extend my respect to Elders past and present and any First Nations people watching. I would like to acknowledge that I'm speaking to you today from the unceded lands of the Silk Okanagan Nation the custodians of the land of so-called Kelowna. I extend my respect to elders past and present and any First Nations people watching. Hello, everybody. Um, once again, we're here to chat about Motherland Port Salem. I know you can all see her, but I want to welcome back one of my just absolute favourites. Um, she's spent the last four years crafting one of the most well-rounded queer leading characters on television. We missed her light at times this season uh, while she was lost amongst the mushroom spores. But honestly, that made every scene that she was in glow just a little bit brighter. Um, I couldn't be happier than I am right now to welcome back the talent, the grace, just the whole package. Taylor Hickson, hello, my love, how are you? Oh my God, what an introduction was that? They gave me the best introduction that could have, oh my God, okay. Listen, I had a long flight. I was doing all the- Look at me, I'm, I'm sweating. <laughs> Thank you, that is such a sweet, sweet message um i'm so excited to be here it's always a blast chatting with you you have the greatest energy so thank you so yeah. much that is coming from you who just has like light raining out of you at all times well it takes um, one to know one <laughs> so i don't know if we always just end up getting like up and up and up, and up. Yeah. <laughs> It just gets more chaotic. It's awesome. Um, with the serious questions first, so we've gone on such a roller coaster with all of the characters. Um, season three, quick and heavy. There was a lot of stuff going on. Um, which, uh, but honestly, we love to see so much happen in such a short period of time. How do you see Rail's journey over these past three seasons, sort of in your own process? What a question. Um, I mean, between myself and Rael, there were so many parallels to my personal lived experience. And I think we really took turns building each other yeah. uh, character wise. But I mean, when we first meet her, she's so angry. She has no control. And the only way for her to establish control over the immense grief and anger she's feeling and vulnerability is to say, you know what? The only thing I feel like I do have control over is my life. And um, I'm not going to let someone else take that from me. So I will do what I believe is the heroic thing and take it before anyone else can. Yeah. Um, you know, she's, she's not feeling value in her community. She feels like she has no belonging. She's so lost and furious when we meet her. Um, so to, to see her now, she's just like a different person. Yeah. I mean, physically and emotionally, but through meeting Scylla and all of that Freudian nonsense that you know she's missing with her mother I feel like she's getting the caretaking and the connection that she's been grieving with the loss of her mother yeah, yeah I mean their names rhyme for, like it, that couldn't be a more obvious yeah, no. it's destiny right absolutely yeah. and I think you really see her find the um the Tao or the Tao which is sort of the balance between extremes. You know, when you have a pendulum swinging, you knock into one extreme and you swing into the next. And the only way to sort of center yourself is to find that one, one brief piece of stillness and to find where, where your boundaries are pushing and to sort of stay and navigate that channel of stillness. And I think she spent the trajectory of the last three seasons doing that and falling in and out of that, which is human. I mean. Yeah. I mean, other than maybe the very practiced monks and spiritual leaders that yeah. know how to do this expertly, but the rest of us were sort of thrown to our yeah, absolutely <laughs> the fences, you know. Yeah. So I think it's you're really seeing that the human nature of her navigating that that push and pull and yeah. finding her own yin and yang in the midst of yeah. you know the the symbolism between her and Scylla, the light and dark, the the life and death, the healer and the, the life. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, and just playing with the romance of that cycle. Yeah. Um, that when you meet her, she's so much stronger for finding power in her femininity versus yeah. seeing the weakness and being vulnerable and being emotional 
um, because it's provided her with intuition, connection, and and susceptibility to you know giving into her vulnerability and finding why that makes you stronger. Yeah. Um, and you know her navigating her own confusion of being a teenager and yeah. not understanding how to love yourself and and not understanding that when you know you spread yourself so thin you not only have nothing to give anyone else you have nothing to give yourself you've you know it's so it's all about finding the balance it's like riding a bike <laughs> with a very flat tire yeah, yeah. and like a missing handlebar so it's just like <laughs> It's like riding a unicycle. <laughs> yeah, on another unicycle. Yeah. Like, it's infinite, the amount of work that goes into it. But instead of taking the shortcut to grief and misery and sitting in that simple, easy choice every day, she's having to face the decision to choose happiness, to fight for something bigger than herself, to, to push her boundaries. And it's the more rewarding thing, but it will always be the more difficult choice. Absolutely. And I think Scylla really branched that opportunity out for her and I think that was sort of what fueled the the understanding of her own capabilities yeah her own potential yeah I like when you were when you started talking about that push and pull you were doing this Kat pointed out that out to me when I was talking to her I did that about something she's like you're doing weather work (laughs) (laughs) it's an all of us too so like we got it we got it going on you got a little bit of uh abigail in you now (laughs) Yeah, don't we all? I mean, absolutely. I told we talked about this last time. I'm a Leo moon, so every time Abigail does something a little bit off, the, I'm like, mm, yeah, I get it. I understand. So, I'm a Taurus moon, so like my thing is stay in the stable, comfortable thing, and don't upset anyone. And yeah, I'm just like so. I really had to learn how to stand up for myself, and Rails taught me that. Yeah. Versus, I've taught her that. You know, we've really held each other's hands through learning how to do that without relying on the tropes of masculinity yes. because I felt like I wouldn't be taken seriously unless unless I acted like a man yeah. how society portrays masculinity yeah. which is so ill-informed yeah absolutely. so misunderstood what the you know the tropes that we've sort of painted as masculine and feminine are so misunderstood yeah and um finding the strengths of both and the balance of both, I think is where Braille is, is landing. She's trying to figure out how to anyways. Yeah. Well, like I, I sort of related to Rail's experience in sort of a funny way because I'm non-binary. So like I seeing Rail's journey and the way that she's navigating all of her spaces, it's sort of, it had a, even though Rail's not non-binary, it had this like through line for me of being like, you're finding these the way to identify yourself in these spaces and you don't have to say you know you don't have to give yourself entirely to one thing or another absolutely. thing whatever. you know you are that's just true. you and finding your own process and it um absolutely uh, it's just yeah I, I think it was so much of that too and not letting gender or tropes of either define yeah. define you as an individual and, and navigating why one or the other doesn't make you weak yes and the comfortable strong space for for her yeah Absolutely. Definitely. It's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. No worries. You know, we, no, I love you, Taylor. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Rail has had, as we talked about, this spectacular metamorphosis, and we, you know, it is because of these relationships that she that she has with her sisters and also with Scylla. So, what has she learned from her sisters, from from Tally and Abigail? Um, because we touched on what she's learned from her relationship mm. with Scylla, but right. um, that relationship with Abigail and Tally is so. Yeah. And your relationship with Jess and Ashley at the same time. Yeah, so. it's in tandem to you know everything she's learning with Scylla, but it's it's about your community needing you, and I find that feeling lost so much comes from feeling unwanted or worse so unneeded feeling like you don't have anything to contribute to your society that you know there there's no value no one finds any value in you and that you have nothing to offer and I think they really gave they really worked for that pocket for her to to feel like she had something to offer and to remind her constantly day in day out that she's needed whether that idea be available to her and you know their workings yeah. very early on it was plainly obvious that through working together versus you know trying to <laughs> trying to use anger to manipulate the other to submit or yeah. you know trying to assume control over one another wasn't going to work yeah it was the relinquish of control and knowing that that will get you to the bigger place 
by working as a team, working as a family, showing up for each other and what it means to show up for each other. And sometimes it means like biting your own fucking knuckle yeah. and, you know, not, not letting ego win. That's hard. That's it's sort of, again, it's, it falls into those masculine tropes that are toxic. It's just really, it's like me versus you versus us versus everything else, you know, and that, that applies to all relationships. Absolutely. It will never work if you apply me versus you. And yeah. that's, I find I, today I find myself doing that in all my relationships. It's like, it's instinctual to do this psychological fight or flight thing because we have evolved so far beyond b- being in physical danger. It's become a psychological war. That's a pandemic with anxiety and depression is just, we, we've now evolved to the point where it's psychological fight or flight. Yeah. We don't know how to differentiate when we're safe or not because it's a psychological jungle of like life and death. Yes. <laughs> and so all like manipulation tactics to sort of not submit or to come out on top, whatever that means to you. Yeah. And sometimes that's just the weaker choice. And yeah. I think through trial and error, they really learned that, you know, they'll fail themselves if yeah. trying, trying to get through that way. Yeah. I just, I love the relationship between, between the three. And I love all of those little pocket moments that we get. Um, where they were moments, especially in season three, where you could breathe, um, you know, the, uh, cause like it was, it was hard to breathe for a lot of season three. There was a lot going on. From um, motherland fashion. Yeah. 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 Um, so, you know, I loved, yeah. I loved um, that little scene where, where you come back and, you know, Abigail runs to you and gives you a hug. And that's just, it's a little moment of, okay. We'll that was calm. honest. Yeah. Coming really? back to set, it was like that, like it. I was sort of kept away from everyone and they kept me in this little tent to sort of, um, because of all the side effects I was feeling, you know, overstimulation was a, a massive obstacle for me and it was super easy to trigger. And these are things I was acquainted with. Like these are very new symptoms. I was feeling very hypersensitive to everyone else's emotions. I could feel everyone's energy around me. It was bizarre. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm a very um, externalized person. I'm, I'm very extroverted by nature, I think. I do all of my processing externally by yeah. communicating with other people or doing something physically. It, yeah. it helps me understand people. Whereas, um, yeah, I really had a, a scope through through the introvert lens when that yeah. happened because I was so hypersensitive and so empathetic to everybody that I could barely stand to be around anyone. It was such a weird side effect. I'm not mm-hmm. sure why I became so susceptible to people, but was it from concussion? I mean, I think so. It sort of subsided a bit, but I I haven't been the same since. And I wouldn't say it's either a blessing or a curse. It's just different. Mm. I think I, I now have found more balance of extroversion versus introversion and kind of like an ambivert more so now. I definitely need more time alone. Again, it's only been, I don't know, however, like not even a year since. And I know Mm. head injuries take a long time to heal. And sometimes they don't ever fully come back and that was my seventh one and um so it was quite detrimental to to the way that you know to my cognitive functions and um it changed it changed my personality a little bit in a weird weird way but yeah just the way that I sort of perceive things I think it hasn't been it hasn't been in any negative change it's just been different just different yeah just different I um I had a series of head injuries when I was younger I was an athlete and I had, I got in year 12. So when I was um, 17, I got hit in the side of the head with a uh, softball bat um, on the backswing. It came and just, yeah. And it, um, oh my God. Yeah. And so it, um, I got a like little, anyway. Um, but yeah, so that uh, was terrible. And then eight months later, I got into a car accident, like, um, like unfortunately you did. So um, I, when you're talking about personality change and feeling things differently, I know that Seth and I'm very, yeah. so far and it's yes. so it's it's hard for people around you too like I mean I I have I had pretty horrible amnesia in and around the time of the accident you don't have control over your emotions yeah. I think that's so difficult as you have you have no control over the way that you're affecting other people and I was saying things and doing things that were out of character I don't remember a lot I was very reactive and I I wasn't making sense um yeah, I could barely get out of bed and walk around for longer than a minute. It was bizarre before, like I started blacking. It was just weird. It was yeah. just, I've never had so little control over my own mind and body. And I felt so betrayed and angry. Like yeah, infantile, just, right? Like you feel yeah, like a and, baby. Yes, yeah. exactly that. And that's, I've always been the caretaker. I've never had to 
be taken care of. And I think I really resented the fact that I was being taken care of. And that comes so much into, into play with what I brought to the screen was like having, having the balance. And again, that was my personal issue my, with my narrative of, with control. It was like, I, I didn't want to submit. I thought that it was weak. And I was just like, I'm catching myself doing the same shit that I preach about. And now it's, I really have to put it yeah. into practice. And I'm like, I'm going to keep being taught this lesson until I learn it. Yeah. It was, it was hard to, to be the, what I felt like was a baby, you know, it was hard to be taken care of. And I, I don't think I was easy to take care of because of that. So I'm so grateful to my family for being there for me, but they didn't understand anything that I was going through and it was so difficult for them. They didn't understand why I was acting so different. I think that to me is what stuck out the most in terms of symptoms was like the ripple effect it has on the people you love. Yeah. Head injuries are, are no yeah. joke. There's something else, right? Like you hurt your arm, it gets better. You hurt your head, and that's the thing. Is like it's not it's not a visible injury. So people start treating you like like you know yeah. they, they have their regular expectations for you, yeah. and when you can't deliver, it's just it feels like constant failure. Yeah. You know, it, like you, you need to carry a sign around that's like, please just have a bit of peace. <laughs> <laughs> please mind your noise. I am sensitive. Like. Like there's like safety things they put on dogs, you know, the colors that says like danger might bite. Like it's me and using like a cone on my head and just like noise canceling it. The blanket. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, everyone be gentle with Taylor time. Yeah, but that was it. So it was just like my return to work. Everyone was treating me like this thing that would break, which also made me angry because I knew that they were doing the right thing and out of love and good intention. And I needed that, but I didn't want that to be my reality. I wanted to be strong. I wanted to be a leader. I wanted to, you know, I, I really felt like I had come into my responsibility as being, you, you know, they, they always say so much shit about number one on the call sheet. And I'm like, no, we're a team. Like it doesn't make any difference. Yeah. And through a being on the show but watching other number ones on other shows when you know when I'm not that place in the call sheet yeah. it's like people pay attention to everything you do and you set the example and it's a heavy responsibility and I had lots of people remind me of that being in this position and you know I eventually came into it wanting to make a good example wanting to protect my team and and you know work as a team and and then I felt like I was failing my team by a not being able to show up for them and they were fine. Like, but it was just the, the pressure I put on myself. Yeah, of course. Like I was failing everyone. And on top of that, I knew it was our last season. And I was like, I wanted to take in everything. I am missing this. I'm missing this. And it's, and there was nothing I could do. I felt so sorry for myself and like such a victim, but like, again, all of that, transplants into Rael and like her being stuck in the mycelium it was so many interesting yeah. parallels to play with and um I think it really made sense <laughs> yes bizarre. I'd love to just touch on that scene between Rael and Scylla in the finale um after Rael friendly fires Scylla like I saw that and I was like hello whoopsies um, <laughs> um <laughs> that is such an awesome way to describe it <laughs> um yeah, we knew that the second that happened, we knew that we were facing just pain. Um, so how is it for you to get to that place sort of emotionally? Because you've gone there quite a few times from Motherland. We don't, you know, we know this. We, you, you, give, you give everything, all your blood, sweat and tears. Um, yeah, how is it to get back to this, uh, that place in such a hugely pivotal moment for the show? Oh, my. I find it so interesting that you picked that moment of the finale. Um and just feeling grief. I mean, I sort of feel like she feels like everything went backwards, like everything she worked for, the entire piece of her lifetime that we've been audience to has been undone. And, you know, everything that she fought for to have value, to have hope, to have love, you know, connection, all of it, it was just like, did it matter? Did it matter if now there's nothing this I think it's just like there's a you know there's a part of her that shuts down and oh man shooting that scene where I'm yelling back at Jess. Yes. Yeah, the, I mean, the that went on for, she's dying. Of course. Oh. Like the way we the way it was edited, of course it was much more condensed, but 
I swear to you, if you were in the room that day, like the amount of anguish you could hear from everyone, everyone, the entire crew was silent, but I feel like everyone was feeling so much pain by that point. I mean, just whether it be in their physical, their physical self or in their, their personal lives or parting with this thing that we've worked on for four years, it was just like all the sadness and anger and everything that everyone had been carrying around for months was finally just blown out. It was crazy. Like, so I know some crew members, like they were like, I had to go home. Like some of the more sort of introverted yeah. and, and empaths had to excuse Separate themselves. Yeah. It was so weird and so powerful, but there was, it was so therapeutic. I think once we had finished and we'd all really felt like we had deeply been through something coming out of that scene and you know they cut and we we would all lay there on the floor we were all laying there on the floor we couldn't stop crying it was just like we were possessed by our own grief it was bizarre and I couldn't tell you why each person was crying like it was sort of like an unspoken thing that we were all sharing this pocket of grief yeah and it was such a strange weird moment of interconnectedness but it was like so deeply bonding it was it was one of those weird moments as like why you're an actor why you're an actor and you know they have those moments where you cut and you're just like i can't leave this space like i'm i'm here i've com yeah. fully committed my physical and emotional body to this yeah. it was one of those and um yeah i find it so interesting that you caught that because they did it, it's so there's so much information in the finale yeah. it's so condensed but yeah, yeah that was a very pivotal scene and even in terms of the way that we all interact with each other it really honored I think the way that we all connect to each other in an instant like we all we can all drop in into a moment and be there for each other when yeah. when we need to like we were that tight together as a team we're that synchronized and connected um it said so much to the team bond I think yeah it's a it was the same level of intense energy and intense I, yeah grief and pain that came with uh the dungeon scene in season one it yeah. had that same sense of like when it was done I realized that I hadn't breathed through the entire session <laughs> I was like no no like um so sure. and Tally's screaming for Alda like it really was just oh god oh. in the room like we were and I tell you we were in this massive cement room with green screens yeah. and so like the entire crew was huddled into one spot yeah. and the the agony in Jess's voice when she screamed that like it's like I get shivers thinking yeah. about it but like her oh my god with it, like from her yeah it sounded like from it came from room. somewhere deep yeah oh my god like I remember being they were shooting just her for because you know they'd had to turn around yeah. on her and so they sort of removed us from the premise and I remember being behind the screen and really just getting the chance to listen to that. And I remember two crew members came over and just like held my hand and were like, I can't listen to this anymore. Like it's, I'm, I'm in pain listening to this. It was bizarre. Yeah, absolutely. But like the, but the pain that came through on your voice as well. Like I, I know that you know, it's hard to talk about yourself in like, you know, in very congratulatory ways, but like when you were screaming for Tally to help, I felt that somewhere really deep. It was so... I guess beautifully played but it felt so real and it makes sense for me to hear that it came from these very real places of grief Absolutely. Um, yeah how long did that um take that scene to to film because sitting in that in for so long must have been it was it was a long time I would say five or six hours like it was a long long time yeah it was that's... one half of a day it was after lunch yeah and I think you know we were it might have been the, the second last day of shooting I think that's a long time to sit in that kind of heightened emotion. It, that's the thing I think is because we were all having to remain in this pocket. It was just like some crew members were leaving because they were like, you could drop a pin and it was like, no one was talking. Everyone was just feeling so tightly wound and <laughs> and naked and in a raw, yeah. so. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so from what we saw in the finale, mm -hmm. um, what do you think, you know, would be next? for the core four in terms of, you know, not talking about anything that would come if there was to be a season four, but in your, in your mind, what you like, yeah, after I mean, the chopper lands. 
I imagine they kind of like make their own little compound and live on a farm and they all kind of have their own houses and they all ducky farm <laughs> ducky farm and they all live in like close you know close enough that that tally can come over and say hey do you have any flour i'm making you guys blueberry cupcakes yes <laughs> that kind of thing absolutely close enough where they can all have like banana pancake breakfasts yeah yeah but i think just like serenity just a breath of yeah a breath in yes, general one breath just breath. one just one they're so fleeting you get like a little gasp every now and then yeah throughout the series but i think somewhere where they just have contentment and peace yeah. before the next thing you know whether it be like aliens now that i don't know how much bigger it gets but like yeah. we need to we need to get elliot and the writers on the phone to say where, yeah. where they go what's next <laughs> Well, yeah, it would just, I think it would just be some contentment and um, peace and, you know, maybe a little baby making from all of those couples in there. Absolutely. <laughs> Greg and Tally. That can be this, yeah, that, <laughs> that can be the spinoff. Oh my God. The kids. Don't worry, I'm sure so all of the writers have already started writing the uh, the kid fan fictions. They're, they're already on the make. So, you know, dip your toes in there if you <laughs> Yep. Okay, so what were your what were some of your favorite moments on set this season? Obviously the return moments. Yes. Um those were really emotional. Um I got a very slow return, so it was like one one or two days of work a week. Yeah. Um, so I slowly got to see everybody until finally we're all reconnected. Nice. Yeah, but I mean, I loved all the playful scenes with Scylla. Obviously, those are some of my favorite because they're those are our brief moments, like yeah. the the pockets of just intimacy and being, and there's no like life or death threats or other obstacles. Yeah. They can just enjoy each other's company like the rest of the world doesn't exist for yeah. a split second. And I think it makes such a great um contradiction to everything else going on in the storytelling um but yeah I'd say just having everyone together and shooting the wedding was so fun we did it in such a beautiful spot and you're all having lunch in the sun and the grass and just having fun you know we got to dress up like we haven't since Beltane and yeah and yeah and just your wedding outfit was fabulous (laughs) it was amazing it was so fun and the scenery scenery was so beautiful and everyone looked so beautiful and yeah it was just yeah. it was fun it wasn't something I thought I'd get to do so early in my career it was yeah. a wedding you know or ever you know yeah. so yeah. it was yeah it was fun to play out and you know I I was falling in love off screen yeah. at the same time so t- to sort of meet the person that might make this possible yeah to, to never have seen that before that was just like a an interesting juxtaposition and, and while I was in the same boat so we were sharing so much of these like yeah. intimacies and like the the thoughts of you know like when we were little kids of how we imagined our wedding and what that looks like and yeah. getting to bring all that to life That's so, so gorgeous so fun and we were yeah. so giddy the whole time like there was no way we weren't having yeah fun but it was just like the perfect setup everyone looked amazing it was a big party everyone did look incredible we didn't get to hear the vows though. I, okay. So funny enough, I actually didn't get to watch this episode because it was like 5 a.m. when it came out and I was in Europe. So that was the one I missed. For the finale, I obviously woke up at like 4 a.m. to, yeah, to yeah. do it. But then I was like live tweeting. <laughs> and I looked up. So I was like, where am I? Yeah. I was in a hostel in a bunk bed. I was like, I gotta be quiet. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> wasn't. Nice. Great, but no. <laughs> people were like what the fuck are you doing i'm, like, I'm working i'm working on my Why? show, my TV show. <laughs> yeah like how do you explain that my, i i just i lied i told everyone i met i was a server <laughs> they were just like oh and i'm like yeah so what do you do let's talk about you because i don't know how to explain my job to people they yeah. were just like i was insane that's completely um, valid yeah i am uh i'm an army witch on tv they're like why no you're not <laughs> Never mind. Uh, I'm a server. What do you do? Um, yeah, so I missed the episode, so I didn't yeah. actually get to see the wedding. I've just seen stills that we got to see before yeah. the episode aired. Yeah. 
um, but I haven't actually seen it. So I'm really excited to see it, but it's beautiful. Really? <laughs> I can tell you it's beautiful. No, they, they show it, but there's music over it. So we don't hear what the words are. Yeah. I wonder if I could find it. Yeah. I hate that they did that because <laughs> they made us memorize the vows the day of the morning of. They're like, by the way, you guys have vows. Cause they told That's us- That's so rude. <laughs> they told us it was going to be a montage. And then they're like, actually, we want to get vows in here. I know. And we were all like, oh, it was like a paragraph of vows. <laughs> Do you remember the like gist of it or? Oh gosh, I couldn't tell you. My memory was terrible around that time yeah. too. Like coming out of the, I just, I remember visuals, but I couldn't tell you what my lines were, but yeah. I, I should find them. I bet you I could find them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I wonder if they let me post them, but we they had them on a separate, it'll probably be in my email because they emailed them yeah. to us separate from the sides and they're like, can you actually just, just remember it was like a little thing just a little, like, like, just a little and i was like oh my fucking god it was like this monologue we we're all like ah! <laughs> freaking out it was fine we got yeah. it now that i'm thinking about it i'm remembering a little more um i don't think any of us ever got through a full take of not messing it up oh really that might be why <laughs> we're like you guys can just like go back and forth between the other person but i think they said they were going to use it they were just going to all have different pieces of us saying yeah, it yeah. like yeah we can whoever's like um, saying it right we'll just cut to them doing it and it'll all be pieces of you guys yeah. doing it but i guess they just did it in a <laughs> montage way and whatever um zodiac signs we always have to get here um <laughs> <laughs> so um we we discussed the zodiac signs last time. Last time you mentioned that Sil Rail is a Scorpio. Has that just been reinforced this season, or do you reckon there's any shift in your opinion? What what's going on? What do you think? I don't know. Now I would kind of almost swap Rail and Scylla. Okay. I think, and that's only because I know so many Aries. Like Aries are big crybabies. That's the joke. Yes. Like, they're like. <laughs> And they're all like but and then you start to sob you get mad yeah, and they're then like, you cry they're like yeah cancer's the cry of the zodiac and i'm just like no i know a lot of cancers and they're actually like Rrr! like they're they chihuahua great. energy yeah <laughs> big chihuahua energy like yeah but aries are like they talk so much shit and they have the biggest hearts like they feel so much they feel so much tyrannins and aries my little brother is an Aries. Amalia actually is an Aries. Yes, I did know that. Yeah, so I don't know. I feel like a Scorpio and Aries are, I think, are are good because they both feel so deeply. So yeah. either one would almost apply. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I'd say I'd say you could interswap them okay. and it would still work. <laughs> okay, I, I like that. Um, I think a... yeah, Rail's such a mush ball. Like I think she's almost a bigger mush ball. Um, so that's why I said Aries. <laughs> Very fair. I do think yeah. that Scylla had a couple of big Aries energy moments, though, where we're just sure. like, bestie. Uh... Bestie? <laughs> You're exposing us all. Girl. Yeah, I was like, babe, turn it down. Babe. Babe. Like when she's sitting at the table with all the dead animals and she's just staring at them and she's just like, I'm like, yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. I understand. <laughs> that's where I was like, I couldn't tell, like, Rail getting jealous. When yes yes i couldn't decide if that would be scorpio or aries because they both have like a possessive thing it just comes mm. from a different place yeah but i think because it was almost like comical that it was aries where if it yeah. were like serious and very possessive it would yeah. be scorpio but with aries it's funny you're just like take it down a yeah bit. <laughs> yeah no that i thought that i was just I thought exactly what you said. They're just staring at you, like just wearing everything. You're like, yeah. oh, I wonder what she's feeling. Aries, <laughs> Big Aries. Yes, I agree. I think for all the others, they all stayed fairly consistent. Tally, yeah. she's still a Pisces. She's been Pisces. She'll stay Pisces. She's been a Pisces. Yeah, she, she stays there. Yeah. Um, Ashley remains Leo Capricorn somewhere. That, you know. that, very that, very that. The representation in Motherland is just out of this world. And it was so cool to see some more of it in season three, especially the conversation in the Yule episode um, between M and Tally that was close to my heart as a non-binary person. I was like, yeah, 
that's the vibe we sit in the gray area I agree have you had a chance to chat with S I did uh before season three I want to I will try to talk to them again I really hope you get a chance to talk to them again because they had so much input in creating that bit and it was a completely different thing when written yeah and it was fucking magical to say the least and it was gorgeous seriously so I I really hope you because if anything you should hear it from them it's 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 incredible yeah no I I I definitely will uh, I mean I'll try if they want to speak to me (laughs) Um, (laughs) crashing their DMs hey um, yeah, so with the representation of Motherland, you've just done all, such a fantastic job of representing so many fans um, and helping them feel seen for the first time, since mainstream media doesn't like to do that with, uh, with diverse communities very much. You just mean the absolute world to the fans. Like, dead set, they would go to bat for you every day of the week. Um, what has their support meant to you? Because I know that we've, talk- we've spoken about representation in the show before, but... Yeah talking about how that works with the fans what does that mean for you man like they bet for me i them you know um there's not much i wouldn't do for the family that we've created it's completely changed the trajectory of my career which i know that we've talked about i mean i i was sort of speaking to this earlier today but i just i can't fathom becoming attached to these characters that you, you know you see in in media and in, in storytelling on you know whatever network and having it taken from you constantly having these characters die off having them leave the queer relationship for a different relationship having them have a horrible ending like it's just I can't imagine how exhausting that must be to to feel let down and to never see a healthy example of how queer relationships should can look you know to 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 say that it's the amount of queer relationships that end in agony on screen is just like what example is that setting what does that say about having a healthy functional relationship it's just like it it kills hope it it kills any relation to these characters it it kills faith in self and and like the, the your image of love and it's just like it there's an unfathomable problematic list. It's so frustrating. It's so frustrating. And it, it's since my eyes have been open to this, again, it has completely shifted the way that I take on projects, what I look at, what I, what I have a say in creating, you know, writing my own stuff and, and what message I want to send out. Yeah, all of that. But it's like, the more we do it, the more, the more people like me who had no fucking idea, which is awful ignorance isn't is the issue ignorance yeah. is the issue and it's just like there the more we talk about it the more we do stuff like this the more we have these important conversations the the more it shifts yeah and that's Definitely. that's all that's all we can do you know and as an individual connected to this team of you know die hard supporters that it's yeah. like that's all we can do is just work together and and be vocal which we are fucking awesome at doing yeah 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 I mean you I remember uh like at the end of our interview last you told the fans to be really fucking annoying and honestly <laughs> they took that and ran like genuinely they were like, yes we got it we're just gonna keep going um, <laughs> they said, Say less. yeah they said we got permission let's fucking go um so <laughs> what you said about it being something that the more we see of it more representation we see will create more projects where more representation can be seen it's yeah. it's a domino effect and it will you know the more visible that queer people are on screen the more people uh visible that people of color are and indigenous communities are on screen we got to see that beautifully in motherland this season yep. um we just i feel as though media uh is afraid of diverse communities yeah, uh, i completely 110 percent agree yeah and like, i'm in the midst of it and i see it constantly in 2022 yeah. and i can tell you it fuels a fucking anger that there's yes. no stopping <laughs> so, yes that's just it though it's like it's up to us it's it's up to it's up to the generation coming into this and we have the say we have yeah we have control of that and yeah. yeah but it's like the more traction that occurs the 
the more even even to the suits if they go well it's what's needed it's what the people want it's what yeah. you know so it's like that's where being vocal really helps because even the people where you can't communicate emotion to the the, the people that you can only communicate money to yeah and media it's like it's still it's it, it funnels into the same thing yeah. but being vocal it makes the suits wake up even so that's yeah. that's as much as we can do definitely well if we talk about vo vocal motherland fans are you aware that Rayla has won just won telltale tv's ship of the year um with 50 000, uh, over fifty thousand votes no <laughs> yeah I I've been in Europe. I've been off of like Twitter and Instagram. I'm so, I just got be real. Like, yeah. I don't know what's going on. Uh, I have look, no idea what's happening. You... I've been playing com computer chess. That's all I've been doing on my phone. Okay. I did that That's for, no, I did that for 14 hours on the plane. Don't talk to me about computer chess. I love you. Oh my God. We have to... So I don't know if you can see, but yep. You've just, and you had wait, over. I, wait, did I, I think I might've seen this actually. Yeah. So no, just... wait, this is recently. Yeah, this is literally yesterday. Yeah. Oh, oh. shit, I did not see this. Yeah. Oh my God, you're getting a live reaction right now. <laughs> I'm freaking out. Oh my um, God. Yeah, so you guys have just won with over 50,000 votes. Um, you beat Station 19, Meyer and Garena, which is, you know, a massive show. Um, you've also, you also beat the likes of Jake and Amy from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Oh my God. Um, and First Kill, and uh, yeah, so. First Kill? Yeah. Oh my God. I sent it to you on Instagram. So if you need the direct thing, it's there. Um. <laughs> you. <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> oh. Yeah. And the rally from the fans, you should have seen it. So like what happened was Station 19 was winning. They're at 30,000 or something. And we had, we were a couple of thousand behind and suddenly fans were just voting, voting. Everyone was retweeting it and flew past them in the last like two days of voting. It was incredible to watch. Oh yeah. <laughs> if we ever are trying to talk about how much the fans love you guys and talking about numbers that matter to big wigs, that showing out from the fans is pretty huge. Oh my God. <laughs> I just tagged you in my tweet. <laughs> you are freaking out. Oh. oh my god. I can't believe that. I had no idea. Yeah. I had it on my phone. That's terrible. That's terrible. But that's awesome. It's incredible, right? Oh my god. Thank you so much for, for letting me know. That's no worries. Cheers to the storytelling in the relationship though. Like, yeah. What an honor for Motherland. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. It's of beautiful. course. Of Thank course. you to everyone who voted and made that probable. That's fucking crazy. It's, it's like insane. 50, Over 50,000 votes. Yeah. I've got, hold on. I might have the screenshot on my phone of the last vote number. I can't even. That it's huge right like absolutely insane there we go so that was the last oh my god yeah wow yeah oh my god i know man a lot of votes that's a lot of votes <laughs> that is such a testament to what we were talking about the power of representation and yeah. people relating to that and feeling seen and feeling hopeful about their love yeah that's brilliant that's amazing thank you beautifully timed no worries <laughs> i might i might all how, how about i clip uh part of your reaction to uh to send out to the fan <laughs> be like, just be like taylor says thanks guys <laughs> yeah no kidding my god what has playing real color meant to you oh my gosh that is an enormous question but like it, it it's it's such an enormous answer that it just can't be yeah it, it can't be worded um everything is an answer if that's if everything that too. everything everywhere all at once which i just watched which is it's that <laughs> that's what rails yeah. has brought to me that's like she's 
it was like it was like my high school graduation it gave me everything that my school experience didn't it shaped me it saw me from being a teenager to young adulthood like that that the growth is substantial with the, you know it's through such pivotal years um i had those people to rely on and they had my back they showed up for me day in day out and i did my best to do that for them so it created a, a community and a network that that cradled me for for some of the the hardest but most um, rewarding years of my life. It's beautiful. What do you hope for the legacy of Motherland? If this is where it ends, if this season is the stopping point, what do you hope? I mean, I just hope it will continue to reach audiences. I'm hoping that even if the storytelling doesn't continue, that by word of mouth and the connection people felt to the story, through that, it the message is carried on. Through that, the sentiment of everything that was taught and all the people that grew with our show, you know, they can pass on what they learned or, or apply it to their relationships, anything that they connected to or learned about themselves. I just hope it, that it's a platform and a vehicle for personal growth, um, for inter, interpersonal growth in any relationships, um, how to contribute to society, um, value in the self, like any any of those core morals and values that that we can gift in any way shape or form if anyone can take anything from the storytelling that is like that is beyond what we could have hoped would would have been the legacy for motherland did. Yeah. and i i hope it you know continues to have a home and streaming platforms and where people can have access to this and and access to the representation and i hope it just spreads like fucking wildfire the the concept of representation Absolutely. i hope people see the enormous effect it has and the hold that it has on the people who care about the show and i hope that the idea of that spreads and i hope this the story telling for queer relationships yeah and representation on screen just spreads like fucking wildfire absolutely and then on the other side if motherland is to get saved if it will go to another platform do you have any messages you'd like to send to those fighting fans and also just for their peace of mind will you be back <laughs> i mean like again we were committed to to see the show go for years and years yeah so like yeah, without ever getting my hopes beyond what you know what, what I can handle yeah. of course I would come back wholeheartedly I would come back it was it, again it shaped me like anything that I can give back to that show versus what it gave me is like incomprehensible there's nothing I could return that would be enough thanks so yes I would love to see it grow and grow and grow yeah <laughs> but I wholeheartedly would give something back if given the opportunity um okay so this is where our questions and I do have a little game for you even though we've gone astronomically <laughs> past time please tell your managers not to get mad at me um <laughs> so yeah I don't need to know a little game it's another finish the line um it's okay if we if we get them wrong you were just so good at it last time Taylor I had to <laughs> you're just so good at it last time <laughs> Miserably failed. Okay. I didn't remember my own lines. This is terrible. Okay, let's just. Okay, we're ready to go. We're ready to go. The first one, I've got five. The first one is Vera. So this is in episode one. Okay. I'm really just taking you back. Okay. So, um, Vera says, "Is there someplace else we can talk to Scylla?" And then she does something before they walk away. And then the next line. I think she goes. There's the wink. Yep. So then the next line comes from Abigail. That bitch just ate my tomato, right? Yes. <laughs> that was the That's why I because yeah. Vera, the girl played Vera, grabbed the tomato yeah. and ate it. And that was an improv. <laughs> and so Ashley looks at me and goes, That bitch just ate my tomato. And I was like, I think that there's probably a blooper of it because the first time we all laughed and she went, Oh my God, I'm sorry. I swore. She just ate my tomato. So funny. Um, this line is from Thelma, so bear killer. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so, she says both halves. Uh, the first part is sometimes you eat the bear, Millie. And the second half of it. Sometimes the bear eats you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did I get that right? Yeah. Smashed it. Well done. Shit. <laughs> so you're doing great. You're doing great. Okay. <laughs> I gotta make up for last time yeah exactly this is this is all redemption 
Yes, so the line's got, the line that you're saying is coming from you. Scylla says, there's always someone trying to keep us apart. And this is in episode... And we will let it? Yeah. I think I said, like she said, there's always something or someone trying to keep us apart. And I said, yep. and we will let it. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Yeah, and then after that's the proposal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that. That's okay. Swiftly blacked out for that. <laughs> Go on. You're going on instinct just to get through it. Get the ring it's off so and put it onto Amalia's finger. Your hands were shaking so badly putting it onto Amalia's finger too. Like, it's because it was cold. Yeah, clearly. Also, because we didn't plan to put the ring on, like I improv that, the ring didn't, I have different ring size than Amalia and it wasn't fitting. So, and then also the props team were like, fuck Taylor, now we have to make one that fits Amalia because she's got to wear it. Yeah. And I was like, Chloe. So, Whoopsie daisies. So I kind of pretend to put it on, like it goes halfway up her finger, and then I pretend like, to slide it on, and then I kind of cover her hand and go, <laughs> but it doesn't actually go on her finger. Oh <laughs> no! But I had to fake it. I, I remember that. that. <laughs> I've been blacked out for that. I was like, oh, fuck. The next one, the line I'm saying is coming from Silver. This is in episode nine. And he says, uh, no, they're imposters. They can change their faces. Um, the next line comes from President Wade. Wait, I remember one President Wade thing and she, she comes in, she goes, oh, what did she say? It was so funny. She's like, you better believe it. Or something. Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> Is it one from the courtroom? Is this one from the courtroom? Yep, yep. Oh, I know. We said this for ages after. How could I forget this line? She slaps him? Yeah. Yep. I can't remember what she says. It was so funny. I could give you, there's two sentences. I can give you the first one. It's, you don't think it's me, Blanton? And then she says. It's something like, you better believe it. Oh, what is it? I tap out. I can't remember <laughs> the phrase. She says. You don't think it's me, Blanton? Check my fingerprints. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> Check my fingerprints. When did that? I was like, yes. We <laughs> cried. We were like, yeah. On her coverage. <laughs> <laughs> Probably to cut us like cheering out. That was so fun. We said that for the rest of the show. Check Good. my fingerprints. Absolutely. <laughs> so sure. Uh, I love Shirley Ralph. She is insane. Iconic. Um, she's she's just... literally like that. Like she's just <laughs> serving all the time. Like she's the best. She's, she's so iconic and funny and always brings the, the oomph. Yeah. yeah. She's great. I <laughs> like, I've never heard of a more worthy Emmy nominee either. Like, yeah. give it to oh her. My God. Like, over the moon. Like, genuinely. About time. Yeah, absolutely. Awards. Yeah. Like. Icon. <laughs> Icon living. Icon living is a huge agree. The last one is from Rael. Uh, it's when you are lying on the on the lovely glowing slab in the in the mycelium. Um, and you just say, why me? And the response is from Scylla. <laughs> I promise I don't try to give you a crisis every time we do this. <laughs> Because, because oh I can't remember I remember being like when she says it both in person and on screen yeah I can't remember I can't remember what she says I remember the sentiment of what she says I don't remember the exact words yeah she says that's you're the only easy. one that can carry you're the only one that can oh, I can't remember that was pretty close I would have given it to you she says that's easy you're the only one strong enough to bear all this that's what it is which is like so true. <laughs> not me, Raelle. Yes. I no. I'm not accepting that. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, I'm like. <laughs> My brother's on the ground, just like mine's <laughs> breaking. We're like God. <laughs> <laughs> doing our best, Taylor. That's, We're the, doing that's our the entire best. motherland experience. Everyone's just like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> veins bursting. <laughs> That's the end of our of our chat today. Um, this has just been, as always, the most delightful, chaotic oh, time. Way um, over time. 
<laughs> We're like 45 minutes. Well, well, I'm, sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry to everyone. Sorry to everyone watching this. No, they'll be stoked. <laughs> everyone watching will be stoked. For everybody at home, please make sure you stream Motherland Fort Salem on Hulu. Um, if you are international, watch it wherever you are legally as soon as you can. Um, because like we know what you're doing. I, I get like it. Legal like we just need to, we just need to make sure that's there because like we get it. We know what you've been doing, but at the same time, make sure you watch it legally. Um, and um, keep using the hashtags, keep supporting uh, Motherland, save Motherland Fort Salem. I do also want to add, please keep standing up for the Switches community where you can. Um, everyone is here to support one another. So there is no need for there to be any chaotic in between. Just uh, stand up for your nice. fellow switches. Yes. So thank you so much, Taylor. Um, in the future with whatever future projects you have, or if we get more Motherland, I would obviously love to talk to you again. <laughs> always, always. Literally, I'm going to be meeting you for brewskis. Oh, my love to you. Thank you so much for you, another Taylor. lovely chat. Thank so you awesome. so much. Okay, see ya. Yeah. Bye. Bye.